Hello everyone, uh, welcome to week four of Grasshopper. And um, this week, uh, to start out, we're actually gonna do something a little bit different. Um, we're gonna look at a plugin for, or add-on for Grasshopper uh, that might come in useful for your next uh, projects. And um, you'll notice that I'm at the Food for Rhino website here, which uh, you'll see a link to. And the add-on we're looking at here is actually uh, on the page right here right now. If it's not um, here, then you'll you can uh, search for it, right? But it's called Elk. This one, and I'll probably provide a link to this on the uh, course module page as well. So I just I'm just clicking on the Elk page, and um, you'll see you'll see. Uh, this is basically a set of tools that helps you generate map and topo surfaces using open source data from this website, openstreetmap.org, and the um, SRTM data from uh, US Geographical Services. Right? So this is actually basically, uh, in a way, it's GIS data. Uh, and we're going to learn how to use this component to help us pull GIS data from online uh, to help us really quickly uh, construct site context, uh, site maps, and that sort of thing. Right? So, um, a couple things. Obviously, you'll have to download this. Um, I will also provide this uh, file um, on the uh, course module as well. Um, so, you can download it directly from Canvas. Um, but if, like, for you know, if these get updated, you know, this is where you would kind of download the latest version. So just uh, remember that. Okay. Um, installation, as they believe they say here. Let's see really quick. Um, installation is uh, talked about here, but it's the same thing. File, special folders, components, uh, and just sort of save the, um, this is a GHA file. Um, let me pull it up. So the first time you save the file, it will look something like this. It's a grasshopper assembly file, GHA file, right? So you just copy and um, go to your grasshopper file, special folders, right, components folder. And your components folder looks like this, and you just paste it here. Mine is already have it, has it already. So um, yeah, just drag and drop it here or copy paste it into this folder, okay? Again, file, special folders, components, all right? These are all grasshopper, either grasshopper assemblies or uh, DOL files. Okay. Now, once you drag and drop it in, it won't pop up automatically. So you will have to uh, close your Grasshopper window, unload Grasshopper. I just type unload and click on it. Grasshopper unload plugin, which unloads Grasshopper, and then load Grasshopper again. When you load it back in, uh, it should show up. I believe. Whoops. I believe in the extra portion. All right, under the extra tab, you'll see um, elk pop up. All right, okay. So um, the first component that's uh, sort of related to this is actually the location component. So you drop that in. And um, let's go back and take a look at the website. So as far as um, the sort of GIS data, um, it's all accessed from this website, OpenStreetMap.org. Uh, you can just Google it, or you can click on the link, uh, whichever you like. Um, if I click on the link, it brings me to uh, this website, www.openstreetmap.org. And you might get a different starting screen because it kind of uh, remembers where you were looking at earlier, right? So you might get this sort of starting screen, okay? All right, now, uh, because I guess um, uh, if you guys were 
you know, in a couple weeks, you're going on your D6 trip. You're either going to be looking at Savannah or Charleston. Uh, so you can actually just uh, type here, search Charleston. Right, and there's a lot of Charleston's, right? So you probably will have to click on the one that's most appropriate. And you'll see uh, a map of Charleston pop up, right? Now this is all uh, GIS data. So here there are a lot of streets, um, and this is all kind of sorted with attributes, all right? And you can actually uh, look at the layers here. There's a lot of the sort of different layers, different map layers as normal map key, et cetera, et cetera, then you know, I won't go into that too much, right? And uh, there's a lot of embedded data in this map, all right? So what we want to do is actually uh, export some of this stuff. And you can actually keep on zooming in, and you'll see it actually goes down to um, Starbucks, buildings, uh, you know, pretty, uh, in general, relatively detailed. It doesn't really have... Um, all those sort of site buildings, but mostly the sort of more prominent uh, structures, right? You won't you won't get like very detailed, you know, plot by plot um, sort of detail. Okay. All right. So let's say, uh, regardless, you know, you guys are working in Charleston somewhere, um, probably somewhere over here or so somewhere over here along the waterfront. Um, so I want to kind of grab an area. Okay, so you'll have to go to the export tab up here, and um, that will actually pull up a sort of, and you can click on this manually select a different area, which will pull up the slider. So you can actually just say, okay, you know, uh, I really don't need that side. And the, the thing is that you don't want to actually export too much stuff at once, uh, because too much data can actually, you can maybe crash your computer if you try to grab an area that's too large, right? And it'll make things uh, really slow. So really just like try to kind of bound uh, just about as much as you need, right? So once you're happy with your sort of map selection, uh, you can click on export. And uh, it'll sort of think for a while. You'll have to kind of let it run. Um, it's sort of, and then it'll start a download, right? And um, by default, it'll name itself map.osm, uh, so that's OpenStreetMap data. Uh, once it's done, I'm going to pull it up and drag and drop it into my folder. So I suggest that you rename it right away, right? Because all these are they're all saved as map.osm by default, so you will want to save it as, you know, um, in this case, charleston.osm, okay? All right, so we're done with the uh, export part uh, from the website. Now let's go back to Grasshopper and Rhino, and uh, we need a way to actually link that file in. And so if you go to the first uh, params tab, uh, under the primitive, there is a file path component. So this is a path. And uh, I'll just also, just to kind of make it clear, I'll pop down a panel, connect it in. All right, so I'm going to right click here on the path and say set one file path. And I'll browse to you know wherever you save this, right? So you'll have a different file path than I will, but basically wherever I save this. So charleston.osm and this uh, the panel will actually show you know this uh, what the file name is and the full path name, right? Just to kind of make it explicit. And I'll right click to make uh, check the draw paths and draw indices because that's not necessary in this case. Alright, so I'm going to plug that into the location and once you have that you'll see you'll get you're starting to get a lot of like location data, latitude and longitude data as well, right, which tells you this is basically um, the latitude longitudinal data of like what you've grabbed. Uh, what you had earlier, 
Okay, so uh, actually, yeah, I don't like these. Yeah, so if you want, if you want to kind of know which uh, longitude and latitude you have here, you can just uh, copy paste that. Just as a side note, um, if you're highlighting something and you're holding down your key, uh, then clicking on the drag uh, on the Alt key will enable you to create a copy. It takes a little getting used to. You have to like hold down and start dragging first, and then hold down the Alt key to copy. Okay. So that's a besides Control C, Control V. Uh, that's another sort of quick and easy way to do this, right? Okay. So this is just so you can see the latitudinal and longitudinal data um, as an output. All right. Let us go back to extra elk, and um, I'm basically going to start with highways and just like drop everything in here: highways, major roads, minor roads. Railways. Uh, I'm gonna skip the topo and then waterways. Okay, highways, uh, major, minor, rail, and water. Okay. Now, quick trick is to select them all and then use this to align them, right? And then if you kind of have enough room, clicking on the top one, this this align will also distribute them vertically. Okay, so I'm going to pull these to the side. Uh, and very simply, what you need to do with all of these components, these are all the same, is connect the O to the O and the X to the X, and that's it. Okay, And you can kind of see, as I'm doing this, oops, O to the O and the X to the X. And after everyone, it'll sometimes it might take a second for it to update. O, X, okay. Depending on uh, how much data there is, so O to O, X to X, O to O, and X. Oops. O to O, and X to. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out and you'll see, oh, okay, now we're getting a point cloud, right? And this is roughly what we saw earlier, uh, map of Charleston, all right? And that, you know, when I highlight each of the components, you can see that that roughly, uh, that's the highways, these are the major roads, minor roads, rail, and waterfront, okay? Now, these are points, uh, which is not so great. And uh, if you zoom in, uh, you'll also see that actually these are also split into different types as well. The highways are split into major links, trunks, uh, trunk links, and a feature key, which we can look at in a little bit. Okay. So what you want to do is actually use uh, the polyline component to link or draw uh, lines between all this point cloud data. Uh, therefore, curve, primitive, and uh, or spline, actually where is it, polyline, this one, okay? Curve tab, spline, polyline, the P line, all right? So you can feed this into here, and you'll see that some of these start getting drawn out, right? Uh, it's basically drawing lines between all the sort of individual uh, data points, okay? So Control-C, Control-V, or Alt-Drag, whichever you want. I'll do a couple, and I guess four for this, right? And uh, you can actually kind of hover over and see if there's any data in there. There is. Uh, there's data in all these, right? Okay. So I'll just sort of align those. All right. 
Now, if you really want to kind of be clean, you know, you might want to separate them a little bit. But I would just copy them all together, right? And then just relink these. So these are uh, primary roads. And if it's showing up like this uh, in yellow or in orange, that means there's no data for that, right? So there's no primary lo uh, road links, at least in this data set. Um, there are primary roads and no primary road links, right? So in that case, uh, if this is just the, this is the extent of the map that you're going to use, then you can actually just delete that one. Or in my case, uh, I'm actually going to link this to there. Second, and then use the last one for my tertiary roads. Okay. If everything's normal, it should look like this, right? Um, if there's nothing in that data set, then it will give you that uh, orange look. So I'm just going to do kind of the same for the rest. And then, okay, so these, this one is unnecessary, this one is unnecessary as well, right? And just replicate the process. Oops. And in these cases, you're just, you know, going through and like this, for example, the rail. Uh, it has the rails. It really doesn't have a lot of these other things. It doesn't have the tram. There's no light rail. There's no subway, right? So you can just like kind of or hover through and see if there's anything. If there's not, then all this like you really don't need. So this, the rail component only has that one. And let's look at waterfront really quick. Dams, nope, nope, nope. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that one will need five. All right, and all these others are empty. Empty point parameter, empty point parameter, empty point parameter. Okay. All right. So that's more or less it. Uh, you can sort of tidy things up if you want. And um, you know, at this point, you can actually take all of these guys and just uh, take all of these. Use spacebar and uh, disable their previews. And you'll see that these are all the lines that have been put in here. Okay? And um, when you highlight them, they actually will correspond to whatever they meant, right? So these are the motorways or major highways. These are the links. Um, these are trunks or minor trunks. So you actually know exactly uh, what these sort of smaller pieces of data are. Uh, Usually, the majority of this data will be the minor roads, right? And then uh, these are unclassified, which is not that many, right? So the majority of the data you see here are go is going to be the minor roads. Okay? So, I mean, this actually gives you a kind of way of sorting through things uh, very nicely. Um, in terms of differentiating between the different sort of uh, map elements, right? Uh, as is the sort of whole point of GIS data. Uh, the other thing that we like to have but is missing here is uh, the buildings, right? So um, that's what, uh, if you go back to Extra Elk, and then you'll see this one, the first one, the generic OSM, uh, generic OpenStreetMap data. This guy uh, will actually allow you to kind of specify what data you're looking for, right? These are specialized components that specifically look for highway and major road and things like that. This is a generic component that allows you to specify um, data, different data types. And what I mean by that is um, if you go to the uh, open source, open uh, street map uh, database, um, there's a place where you can look at the map features. Okay, so if you go to the original Elk page for the Grasshopper site, uh, here under 
this uh, documentation section of the OSM website. If you open that, it will open a page, a wiki page, uh, that says map features, right? And here you can actually see underneath each map feature type what are and um, what kinds of data you can pull out and what subtypes there are. And so, for example, we're interested in building. So, under the building sort of key, there are apartments, farm, hotel, blah 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 blah. Right, all the, a lot of different types, and these are actually fairly granular. And there's the sort of description, even a photo describing what it's like. And so, you just need to remember the key and if you need to, a value, right? If you're looking for apartments, then you would put that in. So what that means is, for this guy, uh, we do the same, right? The O and the X, okay? But they're asking you for a key and a value, right? And that basically corresponds to what we were looking at here, the key and the value. So if you're looking for building, then you just type building into a panel and this can be smaller whatever push that in oh okay so you'll see that now a lot of stuff starts showing up right so these are all the buildings that are in this area right this is defined by your location data okay now if you wanted to Let's say just look at apartments. Apartment. And you actually might need to check your spelling on this and see, okay, apartments. So that's with an S. Okay. And you push that into the value. Then you'll see a lot less, right? Because only these are the ones that have been explicitly defined by apartment as apartments. So if you're just looking for buildings and you don't really need this value key. Uh, it's just a kind of a way to let you sort even more closely, like house, residential. Uh, actually, let's try residential. Residential. Okay. Huh. Let's try commercial. Because this is open source, uh, you know, this is by no means comprehensive, right? So. I think the, the sort of values in here are not as uh, well mapped out. So just sort of keep that in mind. I'll just delete it and just go with the building. All right? Same thing, polyline. Pull that in. And you'll get some errors, you know, don't worry about it. It's just like some of the lines probably just didn't close properly by right? insufficient points where a polyline, you know, some of the buildings were not like defined correctly. Uh, but for the most part, you'll see a lot of these outlines. Right? These are all the polylines that are buildings. Okay? Now you've been seeing this K or this sort of key. Uh, for a while, and if you've been wondering what it is, uh, let's pull in a panel, panel and uh, take a look. And you'll see, oh, okay, these are actually labels for buildings. Residential house, building, blah, blah, blah. These are actually tagged with the specific building type, in some cases, the specific building names, right? All right. So, uh, because of that, what would be really great is actually if, uh, even just for our own purposes, right, if we could like tag the building names back into, uh, onto it, okay? So polylines, because if you look at these, these are generally sort of closed polylines, not all of them, but for the most part. So what we can do is do an area component to get all the area centroids, right? And then uh, let's go back to the display tab, dimensions, text tag 3D, right? So the location is the area centroid. The text to display is basically this, right? Uh, however, you'll see that, you'll note that this is one long list of, I don't know, like 19 
1964-65 sort of tags, right? It's one long list. This, however, this is individual list points, right? This is a, a list of lists. Remember, we we're talking a little about a, a little bit about data structure, okay? So in this case, we need to match these two data structures, which means uh, I will have to actually flatten this. And once I flatten it, it will become one long list with just coordinates, okay? So then you can push this there. And you might not see it at first because it's probably really, really, really small. All right. Um, so you will have to adjust the size of the text. So let's uh, give it, I don't know, let's try 50. A number slider. And just adjust it. To a scale that seems approach. If even 50 isn't enough, this will kind of depend on the size of the input. So let's go to 200 then. And let's just do 150. Or even 200 is not enough. Okay. That kind of gives an idea. All right, so Wells Fargo, unknown. So you'll see that actually now that uh, a lot of these locations have now been tagged with their house names or whatever if there is a name for it then whatever it is okay and uh, that actually this sort of method you'll see and you can kind of look at these uh, you'll see that uh, this actually holds true for all these as well because if I take one of these keys and plug this in you'll see it actually has a um, the names as well okay now the, this uh, the streets are a little trickier to tab because the streets streets are usually made up of you know multiple points that form a line right so when you tag one of these uh, basically will tag every single point which kind of becomes overkill, right? So uh, generally, you probably don't want to do this, but just like the data is actually in there, um, and you can try to tag it if you want. It'll just get really messy, right? That's, uh, that's true for the sort of major roads as well. You know, the street names, street points for the major roads, the minor roads, and so on and so forth, right? So all this basically is coming from uh, the GIS, GIS data that we downloaded. Okay, so using this generic OSM uh, component, you'll see that it's very powerful. Uh, you're able to kind of specify what type of building, or even um, if you look at those sites, besides buildings, you know, whatever other sort of geographic teach, uh, features you're looking for, uh, you can go up to the very top and see. Uh, historic, natural, office, you know, public transport, all this sort of stuff, right? That if it's in the map data, then you will be able to kind of uh, access and sort it out on a very granular level. Okay. All right. So there's a couple things uh, that, in addition, let's kind of hide these so it doesn't get in the way that we can do in addition. Um, the first thing is to try to improve the uh, visualization of this, all right? So um, to kind of make things easier, I know that we kind of split these into, you know, all their sort of separate components or their several separate uh, P lines earlier, uh, just to kind of make selecting them, splitting them out easier. And I recommend you keep them this way. Just so, like in the case you need to, uh, you can always kind of go back and still be able to select them independently. But um, at this point, what you might want to do is actually collect them all into a curve component. So geometry, curve, um, and just sort of push them all into the same one by holding down the Shift key. So when you select them, all the sort of highway components get selected together. All right, and then do the same for all the other ones. that 
that and that. Okay. You can name these if you want, uh, just by right clicking and say highways, major road, minor roads, rail, and water. Okay and align them if you want. Okay, so now that these are sorted, uh, you can actually hide all of these now, control Q, and now these are kind of sorted to by their type, um, large sort of type. And uh, what we want to do is uh, go to display, preview, and custom preview. Right, and then uh, go back to the params, uh, the first params tab in the input. Uh, find a color swatch. Okay, this is a color swatch. You click on the white part, and you can say give it a color. Right, and it's the sort of same thing as um, the changing the color. You know, sRGB, uh, RGB space, or you can just do this um, if you want. So. Uh, Highways, let's just kind of make it red, accept, and then plug that into here, and the highways into there. And so you'll see that the preview now changes color to this sort of, unless I have it selected, right? Um, and you can hide this. The preview is now overlaying with the color that you've picked. And so you can do the same for all these uh, major roads. Let's make that, I don't know. neon green All right minor roads make these uh, blue just control V rail uh, let's make that purple and the water Make that really dark, darker blue. All right, so you'll see that real quickly. This preview basically kind of gives you um, the sorted data sorted by the color that you're assigning. Um, and well, we didn't do anything with the buildings, but since the buildings are kind of on their own reddish color right now, we can just leave them as uh, as it is, right? Okay, so that is uh, a sort of really quick overview. Um, the last thing you can do, or you might want to do, so this preview only affects uh, the preview in Grasshopper. Okay, this doesn't actually, this is just kind of help you visualize. This doesn't actually uh, carry over into the Rhino geometry. So, for example, um, if I take these guys, right, which is the minimum roads, and if I bake it into, let's say, the layer one, and I close my grasshopper viewport, you see the preview doesn't actually bake, right? So you actually have to bake this. Uh, you have to bake not the preview, but the geometry itself, okay? Now, however, if I bake this, uh, this will basically take on whatever color your layers do, right? And so what you'll have to do is actually kind of pre-make um, in Rhino, pre-make the, the colors for, you know, whichever layers they are. So, for example, in this case, it's that first uh, highway swatch, right? Then, since the first layer is already red, I'll just make this the highway. Oops, spelling fail. Okay, so you make the highway layer, right? And then right click, bake, 
and just bake it directly into the highway layer by selecting it. You can group it if you want, if you're not going to like edit anymore. Say OK. So you see that, that the highways are baked in uh, the layer color. Okay. So just make sure that you understand that, um, that you have to bake it in uh, into the layers. Uh, you can bake them all in and then sort them, change the layer colors afterwards. That's fine as well, right? But the preview here is just a grasshopper thing. It's not a rhino thing. So if you're going to try to save this for your own use, then that's what you'll have to do. All right. Um, yeah, I think that covers, uh, let's see, that covers most of um, this part of the functionality for um, Elk. Um, there are the standard components for you to work with. There are these, um, which is the sort of custom input components, the generic OSM that you can use. Um, and that covers most of this. I'll cover the SRT of Topo in a separate one, uh, in a separate video. All right, save it. And um, GIS. Austin GIS map. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one.